In a previous video, I explained how to think about probabilistic reasoning visually by using the Bayesian bar. If you haven't already seen that video, I'd recommend that you watch it before continuing with this one, as I'm now going to explain how the Bayesian bar relates to Bayes' theorem. As a result of this, the content in this video is going to get a bit more technical, but by using the bar, you'll see that it is simpler than it initially looks. In order to show you how the Bayesian bar relates to Bayes' theorem, we're going to need an example. For this video, we're going to use the example of fine-tuning arguments for theism, and just as with the previous video, I'm not really going to say anything about this type of argument or justify the probability assignments that I give. All you need to know for our purposes here is that our universe has very finely tuned values that allow for life, and that if these values had been different, then it's very likely that life wouldn't exist. So let's draw a bar of a perfect agnostic who is 50-50 that God exists. So half of the bar is for theism and the other half for atheism. Now, although you could do all of what I'm about to do on one bar, it's easier to show you how it relates to Bayes' theorem if I draw additional bars with extra content on them. So let's now draw another bar just the same as the previous one but this time we're going to add in how likely we think fine tuning is on theism and on atheism. Firstly then, theism. We might think fine tuning is not that surprising on theism, since we think it's likely that God would want a world with living beings in it, perhaps so that he could have a relationship with them and the goods that come from that. As a result, we give three eighths of the whole bar to theism and fine tuning and one eighth to theism and no fine tuning. We then think about the atheist portion of the bar. This time we're going to think that fine tuning is really unlikely on atheism, as there's no being that wants life, and it seems extraordinarily unlikely that the universe happened to have the life permitting finely tuned values by chance. So we give one eighth of the whole bar to atheism and fine tuning, and three eighths of the whole bar to atheism and no fine tuning. We now get some evidence, namely that there's fine tuning in the world. And so we delete the portions of the bar where it says that there is no fine tuning. Again, to show this, I'm just going to draw another bar with these sections deleted. Notice also that I've renormalized the probabilistic values of the portions of the bar so that they add up to one. As I said in the previous video, this is just the process of changing the values of the remaining probability segments whilst preserving their ratios. So because the theism and fine tuning portion was three times the size of the atheism and fine tuning section, it must be three times the size after this process. So the final probability of theism and fine tuning is three quarters, and the probability of atheism and fine tuning is a quarter. The overall result then is that fine tuning is evidence for theism, as it raised the probability of theism and lowered the probability of atheism. Now, before I explain to you how the bar relates to Bayes' theorem, it'll be helpful to introduce you to some jargon. So take a look at the first bar and the half probability assignments we've given to theism and atheism. These are called our prior probabilities, and they're the probabilities we give to set out the degree of certainty we have or ought to have in certain hypotheses before we've taken this bit of evidence into account. How we determine what these values should be is subject to debate, but exploring that will have to wait for another time. Now look at the second bar and the probability assignments we see there of 1 8, 3 8, 1 8 and 3 8. These are what's called conditional probabilities since they're in the conditional form. This means that they say, given some x, y has probability of dot dot dot. So in our example, given theism, fine tuning has the probability of dot dot dot, or given atheism, fine tuning has the probability of dot dot dot. Okay, now let's look at the final bar and the two probability assignments there. So three quarters for theism and fine tuning, and a quarter for atheism and fine tuning. These are known as the posterior probabilities, 
That is the probability after we've taken into account the relevant evidence. With this jargon now explained, let's think about how the bar relates to Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem says the probability of the hypothesis given the evidence is equal to the probability of the hypothesis multiplied by the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis divided by the evidence. So here you can see the formula written out in full with PR standing for probability, H for hypothesis and E for evidence. The jargon we have just learned is also useful when thinking about the formula with the probability of the hypothesis given the evidence relating to the posterior probability, the probability of the hypothesis being connected to the prior probability, and the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis linking with the conditional probability. In order to think about how the formula works, let's ask the question, what is the probability of theism given the evidence of fine tuning? So in this case, H, our hypothesis, is going to stand for theism, and E, our evidence, will be fine-tuning. In order to find out the answer to this, we're going to need to fill in the other half of Bayes' theorem. First of all is the probability of the hypothesis, which in our case is theism. This is going to be a half, and we can see this in our first bar. Next is the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis, which in our case is the probability of fine-tuning given theism. This has the value of three quarters, which we can work out from looking at our second bar. In order to do this, look at the second bar and imagine removing the atheist half of the bar so that all we have left is the theistic half of it. Now ask yourself how much of the theist part of the bar does fine tuning take up? The answer is three quarters, and this is the value we put here for the probability of the evidence, fine tuning, given the hypothesis, theism. So far we've filled in the top part of the Bayesian formula and now we have to work out what it is that we divide it by, which is the probability of the evidence. To get this value we have to work out how likely the evidence is, in our case fine tuning, on any hypothesis and to do this we need another formula. This one says that we first find out the value of the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis multiplied by the probability of the hypothesis and then also the value of the probability of the evidence if the hypothesis is false multiplied by the probability of the hypothesis being false. And then we add these two values together. So in our case, we get the probability of fine tuning given theism, three quarters, which we can work out from looking at our second bar and multiply it by the probability of theism, which is a half, which we can see in our first bar. We then work out the value of fine tuning given the falsity of theism. So in our case, the probability of fine tuning on atheism, as this is the only other hypothesis we're considering. And this has the value of a quarter, which we can work out from looking at our second bar. And then we multiply this by the probability of the falsity of our hypothesis. And so in our case, the probability of atheism. And here we can see that the value is a half, which we can see in our first bar. After getting these values, we add them together. The result of this is a half, and we can check this by looking at our second bar. For if you look at it and add up the two sections of the bar where there is fine tuning, we can see that it takes up half the space of the whole bar. With that done, we have the three values we need to fill in Bayes' theorem. So a half for the probability of the hypothesis, three quarters for the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis, and a half for the probability of the evidence. So let's answer the question, what's the probability of theism given fine tuning? First we input the numbers we have. So it's a half multiplied by three quarters divided by a half. Since many people find it easier to perform calculations on decimals rather than fractions, that's the same as 0.5 multiplied by 0.75 divided by 0.5. And the answer we get is 0.75 or three quarters. And we can also check that this is right by looking at our third and final bar, where we can see that three quarters of the bar is for theism and fine tuning, just as we got here. So that's how the Bayesian bar relates to Bayes' theorem. Whilst this has been a bit more technical, I hope you can see that the formula is easier to fill out 
when we're using the bar, and the bar is also a helpful way to show you what Bayes' theorem is doing. But remember, as I said to you in the previous video, you can always think about probabilistic arguments in terms of the bar without numbers, if you prefer. But knowing how the formula connects with the bar is helpful, so that you can use the more formal apparatus if you wish, and translate more formal presentations of arguments into the bar. In future videos, I'll discuss some probabilistic arguments in more detail, and the type of probability that we're using when thinking about Bayesian reasoning. So if you don't want to miss out on that, then please subscribe, and if you found this video helpful, then please give it a like.